let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, starting with verse 4. These verses are a word of hope to the exiles in Babylon. Isaiah 34 portrays God's vengeance on Edom, Israel's age-old enemy, which makes the path from Babylon to Zion safe for the exile's return. The desert itself will flow with water to give drink to the returning exiles. The reading. Say to those who are fearful of heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become like a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the book of James. Chapter 2, starting with verse 1, the preface. Faithful Christians do not show partiality to the rich and the powerful of the world, especially at the expense of the poor and weak. Likewise, faith does not pay mere lip service to God's will. Instead, a living Christian faith expresses itself in acts of compassion and mercy for those in need. The reading. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism 
really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, Have a seat here, please. While to the one who was poor you say, Stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But if you have dishonored the poor, is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show, par if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak, and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works, can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand, if able, for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson this morning from the gospel writer Mark is a lesson about listening. And there are some things that we listen to when we read these scriptures that um, maybe we misinterpret from the first time. Our faith is dependent upon what it is we hear. And in order to hear God's word, we have to be open to how it is conveyed to us. The gospel as it's recorded in the seventh chapter of Mark beginning in the 24th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. From there, he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. A second story. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears. And he spat and touched his tongue, then looked up to heaven. 
he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, how, how well do we listen? Uh, our message today is all about our faith is dependent upon what we hear from the Lord, what we hear from Scripture, what we hear from the Holy Spirit. There's a word that is in today's reading that is not one that we hear very often. It's called ephatha, which means be open, to listen, to listen carefully. So let me start with a question. How well do you hear? Um, at times, we've all got a problem with this, I think. <laughs> Does this uh, resonate for anybody? <laughs> so, so wives, you've got a new word now that you can utter to your husbands. Ephatha. <laughs> Be open. Listen to what it is I have to say. Today's gospel lesson gives us two examples of how do we hear and what is the outcome of hearing clearly the first story is a very familiar one um, it's about the syrophoenician woman syrophoenicia an, an area entire in gentile country and we remember enough to know that uh, to the jew the gentiles were unclean people they were outcast people. And so this Syrophoenician woman that Jesus is encountering <coughs> is one that the Jews would never countenance him encountering, yeah, to, to spend no time with her. And what is it that, that she comes to him to say? And this is where we have a problem with our 21st century way of hearing. And, um, what is it she's asking? Well, she's asking for healing for her daughter who is possessed. And Jesus' response is difficult through our 21st century lens. And what is it that he says to her? He says, let the children be fed first. It is not fair for children's food, uh, to take to the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Now, is that the Jesus that we think of? Denying this woman's plea for help? Part of our problem is we don't understand what was being said in the original language in this text. For example, let the children be fed first refers to the Jewish people. Those who heard the word first and what was their response to hearing the word first? They rejected it. They rejected it. We don't throw our food to the dogs. The implication here is that the woman and her daughter are dogs. Well, in the translation out of the Greek, the word dogs that we translate can mean pets. That's a whole different connotation, isn't it? than some wild, unruly, messy, dirty dog. A pet is quite the opposite of that. So here Jesus say this, let the children eat first, we don't give food to the dogs. Let the Jews accept the word of God first. And we don't throw our food away, we don't throw it to the dogs, we'll give it to our pets. And then the woman, quite courageously says what basically uh, says but yes even even the dogs eat what's left 
Well, another thing worth knowing is that in ancient times, in Jesus' time, when people ate a meal, they ate it with their hands, they didn't have implements, they ate their meat with their hands and they ate it first. Imagine that. After eating the meat and having your hands all greasy, they took the bread and cleaned their hands with the bread. Kind of like barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and when you're done then with the bread, the bread then got thrown to the floor. So what is it that we heard in, in this lesson this morning? Well, we heard a couple of things. First of all, we heard that uh, Jesus was willing to go to Galilee. He was willing to go where the Jews would not go. And that says a lot about our Christian faith today. It says that we are called to go where others will not go. You know, uh, some years ago, I, I was a uh, Harley Davidson writer. And every year I would go out to Daytona Beach to uh, Bike Week. All the necessary leather stuff all <laughs> over me. And I viewed it as going to Babylon. <laughs> now here I am, this righteous savior, this righteous warrior of God, going out to the unwashed. And um, actually, was able to do, I think, a lot of good, what I call guerrilla, G-E-U-R-I-L-L-A, ministry. You know, I had a, a vest that I've described to you before that had on the one uh, shoulder a Vietnam veterans patch, and on the other shoulder, the Christian fish. And as you walk down the street with uh, people with beers in their hands, and they'd see this, and they'd say, welcome home, brother. And thank you, I would say, and I point to the other side and say, I'm not home yet. <laughs> that spawned conversations oftentimes or a hasty retreat. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to have a conversation with somebody, to be able to articulate a solution, an answer to a question they might have had all their lives, was a very satisfying thing to do. And questions would come that um, obviously came from people who had no experience in a church or any religious upbringing whatsoever. Questions like, is there really a hell? Is there really forgiveness for people who have been imprisoned? I mean, basic questions that are all answered with our Lutheran theology of grace. And so, what did I hear? I heard people who wanted to know, but were maybe not accepted by the general church community. That's one of the things that we're hearing from the Syrophoenician woman story. A woman considered unclean, uh, not a Jew. Uh, in her homeland of the Gentiles. Jesus went there, he engaged her. He, he, he let her know that he had compassion for her because he did feed her. He did feed her. And how did he heal his daughter? He told his, his uh, encounter with the woman, go home, your, your daughter is healed. Um, I think it's important for us to remember that in this per, uh, particular story. When, when we hear words like dogs, um, we want to be careful ourselves not to label pejoratively people today. We don't want to compartmentalize people as dogs. Um, we need to view them as Jesus did, as, as pets, loved and welcome into our home. The second story is a story um, also about learning and hearing, and it's about deaf man. I think it's important for us to understand that in the um, first century, um, it wasn't a visual community. You know, if you think about our community, you look around and the first thing that strikes you is all of the imagery that's around us. But in the first century, none of that was there. 
it was an auditory community. People learned by listening. And if you couldn't hear, it was an especially desolate place and time to be in. And so here we have the story of, of some friends who approached Jesus. Why did they approach him? Because they had heard about his healing abilities. And what did Jesus do? First of all, he puts his fingers in the ears of the deaf man. And then he does something that when we read it, we hear it in a, a kind of a repulsive way. He, he spits on his fingers. And th then he touches them and he looks up to heaven. Well, we today have lost the significance of the meaning of saliva in the first century. Now, they didn't have antibiotics. They didn't have medicines to heal things. Saliva was viewed as a healing liquid. Uh, and it still today has healing properties to a limited degree. So what Jesus did for this man was uh, who the rest of society had uh, dismissed because not only was he deaf, he was mute. And he's mute uh, because he was unable to learn anything, to know how to relate to anybody. Um, and maybe we have that tendency today when we encounter a deaf person uh, who doesn't communicate. Um, do we assume that the person is just ignorant? Or do we assume that um, they are restricted from being able to have the inputs that we all have, to have compassion for, and to do whatever we can to help that, that person? Um, the key message, I think, in this particular lesson is that Jesus is willing to engage those who others would not. And he was willing to uh, engage this man who was a friend of others as a friend. So what we see in both of these stories is that Jesus encountered the people who were the outcasts, and he invited them in. He listened to them. He healed them. He took care of them. He fed them. He, he cared for them. And that is the lesson that we all should take. It's a simple lesson, really, and I'm sure many of you are already pretty adept at being compassionate and caring for people. So what do you hear? Ephatha, be open. Be open to other people. Be open to their needs. Be open to how you might engage them and to share the love of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand as able and join in singing our hymn of the day, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer.
Let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for today's prayers. <clears throat> May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship. Enlighten your church. Guide all evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries, especially Don and Ken Bishop, who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. Provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, and clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy. You show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world, especially we celebrate Labor Day this weekend. Unite us in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy. You accompany those who are most in need. Shelter all fleeing violence or prosecution. Protect any who are in danger and sustain them through uncertain and unstable times especially those in Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy. You heal the sick, especially heal those listed on our printed prayer list, all those suffering with COVID, and we add Ed Posniak and William Montgomery to our list this week. And those we now bring before you with our spoken word or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You comfort those in need, especially we lift up those impacted by recent hurricanes, flash floods, tornadoes, wildfires, and droughts. Watch over the thousands of responders working tirelessly to aid these people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy. You embrace all who have died in the faith and brought them into your glorious presence. We especially pray this week for the Nancy Corbin family. Uh, that is Dee Foley's sister who passed away this week. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, as all of God's people say, Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be with you always. Also also with you. You. At this time, when we generally would place the um, uh, offering plate. I'd like to offer a thank you for your continued support and generosity as you have shared your some of your blessings with Rock of Ages. Um, whether your donation is by electronic, cash, check, um, your faithfulness is greatly appreciated.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. And so it is, we remember that it was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks. And he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, that all who shall drink of it shall be forgiven of all sin and given eternal life. Do this and share it with all people for all time. And we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and to forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of grace provided to us by a, a, a God who loves us unconditionally, who gave his only son to die for us, and in this meal calls us to be uh, in remembrance of that great gift, to know who we are and whose we are. All is ready. Please be ready to come. Please be seated. Just a reminder, this is an open table. This is God's table. We're just simply the servers. Everyone is welcome to partake of God's grace. You will soon be invited by ushers to come forward to one of two stations where you'll be given a wafer first and then the choice of either a cup of wine or a cup of grape juice in the light liquid. <clears throat> Consume both of those items, de deposit the empty in the bowl, adjacent to your section, and then return to your place by the opposite aisle. We'll be ready here in just a moment.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have just received, encourage you, strengthen you, assure you that you are blessed beyond all understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and house of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. say thank you again for coming out on this Labor Day. May you have a blessed holiday, a safe holiday, and uh, remember that uh, we are fortunate in this country to be able to have people who have labored over the generations to deliver for us a society that is, is free, that is capable of anything that we can imagine. So bless you on this Labor Day weekend. I want to thank those of you at home who have tuned in to watch us on our live stream and remind you that it will be available later in the day to view on Facebook and on YouTube. Let's leave now with these ancient words. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn today, How Great Thou Art.